In this video, we'll take a look at some of the new features that were added to CliffX over this past year, most of which relate to Live 9. For most of the actions that I'll be showing here, I'm going to be using X controls, as that makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. We can add audio tracks and MIDI tracks, as well as name them. We can also add returns and scenes, and also MIDI clips. We can delete tracks, delete clips, and delete scenes. We can duplicate tracks, duplicate scenes, and duplicate clips. We can load specific devices on the selected track, for example, EQ8 or Auto Filter. We can control hot swapping. We can also toggle the state of the browser. We can automate creating duplicates of a clip and setting evenly distributed start points across the duplicates. By default, this will create eight duplicates, but we can create as many as we want, such as 16. We can ramp the tempo up or down over a specific number of beats. For example, we can ramp down to 80 over four beats or up to 120 over eight beats. We can set the values of all the macros in a rack with one action. This way we can create presets that we can switch between on the fly. We can navigate between the chains of any rack and then apply actions to the selected chain, such as mute or solo. User actions allow you to create your own actions that can be used just like any other action in CliffX. In this example, I created an action that will rename all the clips in a track based on the track's name. Creating your own actions doesn't require any deep programming knowledge. CliffX does all the heavy lifting for you, and the file where you define your actions includes a bunch of references and instructions to help you on your way. X clips can now trigger action lists when the clip stops playing. In this example, the clip is going to deactivate itself when it stops playing. The snap track can now provide smoothing that's synced to live's tempo. You can specify the number of beats that the smoothing should occur over, for example, 4 or 16 beats. We can change push's scale settings from another controller. For example, we can set its root note and scale type. These actions are even more useful when accessed via XClips. This allows you to store settings in a clip, and these settings will be recalled when you play the clip. Also, rather than typing in the scale settings, you can capture the scale settings, and this will capture everything, including the octave settings that you're using. This action allows you to temporarily show a message and push the display. Typically, when push is controlling a track that contains a drum rack, you're stuck with the drum rack mapping. This action allows you to force it into scale mapping so that you have all 64 pads to use for playing drum racks. These actions aren't new, they're just lesser known, and they apply to the launch pad and the APCs. You can change the colors that are used to indicate clip status, and you can also display a visual metronome on the controller. Again, this isn't new, just lesser known about, CliffX allows you to trigger an action list each time a set is loaded, and the colors action that I just showed you is a great candidate for this. This isn't new functionality either, but it's very powerful and I think underutilized, possibly because it's misunderstood. You can use CliffX to extend the functionality of other control surfaces, and this is really useful in the case of the simple scripts that are built into Live as well as user remote scripts. For this example, I'm using the built-in MPD32 script, which is pretty basic in its implementation. The mixer controls in this script only allow you to control the first eight tracks in a set. We can easily remedy this by adding a couple bank actions in CliffX. This way we can bank between groups of eight tracks and thus control an unlimited number of tracks. I've also added left and right actions which makes it easy to navigate between tracks. The device controls available in this script allow you to control eight parameters of the selected device, but they give you no way of selecting devices. We can easily remedy that with the dev left and dev right actions. I've also added actions for turning the device on and off and for locking the controls to a particular device. Max for Live doesn't have native access to Live's browser, so there's a component in CliffX that kind of bridges this gap. And you can use this with any Max for Live device, but I've created one specifically for this purpose. It's called Device Browser. All of the controls in Device Browser are MIDI mappable. 
This way you can control Device Browser from any controller. With Device Browser, you can load a specific preset of a device. You can also load a default device, and you can also control hot swapping for the selected device.